Hey, this is Mike McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at adding some feathers to this cartoon bird character using Ornatrix. Now this guy's already got a couple of feathers that are kind of modeled here, and those feathers you'd probably rig with some bones or some other situation in order to get some animation articulation out of them. For the main body though, we'd like to use some sort of parametric system like Ornatrix to add feathers to this character. Now you might use something like a script or a scatter utility, but those things might be a little less flexible or not as easy to set up as Ornatrix. And with Ornatrix, we're gonna be able to add some dynamics to these feathers afterwards, which will be really useful. The first thing we'll wanna do is identify the mesh area where we wanna grow feathers from and kind of a detach that so that we can use as a surface. I've already done that. I'm gonna go and select our OX feather object and unhide it. We just kinda of got rid of the rig and the mesh and some of the other things and left us with just this piece of a mesh that we'll grow feathers from. Now we probably don't want to grow feathers from the inside of the eye sockets or nose so in order to avoid that what we'll do is a sub-object selection. So if I select this mesh and go over to uh, sub-object face you can see that there's a sub-object selection here that is going to be where we want to grow feathers from. So I've kind of omitted the eyes and isolated the areas that we want to grow feathers from. Now you could do this with a object ID or uh, even a map if you want to in Ornatrix, but this is uh, as easy as any of those ways, so I figure we'll go with the sub-object selection. The next thing we want to do is just select our mesh and click on the quick hair option. This is going to kind of make a reference of our mesh, as you can see here, and it's going to add some default Ornatrix modifiers. Now by default, um, we have guides from surface, edit guides, hair from guides, and of course our render settings. Now we probably don't need edit guides right now, so I'll remove that. And we're going to kind of focus on guides from surface, I'll turn off show end result, and hair from guides. You can see in guides from surface that by default we have our use sub-object selection checked on, so that sub-object selection is propagating our hair in the places that we want, which is kind of nice. Uh, this is something that we actually need to turn on for hair from guides because you can see it kind of goes everywhere so let's just check that on so we have parity between those two and that's looking much better now in guides from surface our hair is or feathers are much too long so the first thing that i like to do is go down set the guide length of 50 to something like 3.3 that's going to shorten up our hair quite a bit some other things that we might want to do in guides from surface is adjust the root distribution. Right now it's at a random area based root distribution and that's probably fine for a lot of hair and even a lot of feather setups. But this guy I really want to be a very uniform set of feathers um, and in that case I'm going to use uniform distribution. You can see how that kind of snaps these guides a little more into shape and a little more of a uniform form. The root count can probably stay at 300 and if I scroll down here I may end up changing some things like the randomness or number of points later uh, but maybe we'll save that for dynamics so I think we're pretty much all done with what we want to do in our guides from surface now under hair from guides we already set our sub object selection is good and in general I probably suggest that we also set uniform distribution you can see that of course it becomes much more uniform uh, for those feathers once we do that. Some other things that can add to the uniformity of the hair uh, or feathers in this case is the interpolation space as well as interpolation guide count. So under interpolation we have uh, barycentric and we also have our segment and uh, affine interpolation and I find that affine will be a little bit more uniform for our interpolation and you can also ask it, instead of interpolating between three guides, to just go between two guides. And again, you can see by the graph here, that promotes a little more uniformity. You can see when we snap back and forth, they become a little bit more uniform across the character. So those are two interpolation pieces that you may want to play with. Really depends on the type of bird that you're doing. Um, you know, some of these other interpolation methods may work very well. Uh, for different types of birds with maybe a little more must feathers or things like that. So if I scroll back up, probably want to adjust the amount uh, that we have in the view. I'll set this to 2000 so we can see a few more of these. 
we'll probably leave that at 2K. You may want to adjust the render to be the same if you're going to do any test renders. But in general, actually, we're going to add um, a Mesh from Guides modifier at the end of the stack to render these feathers out. Okay, so the next step up the stack is going to be render settings. And you can see we have this nice triangle shape for our feathers. Um, and I might just go and set this to uh, consistent colors so that we can kind of see all the way around. And I'm going to pop up the graph to get myself a more of a feather shape. So I might go down here and taper this down a bit. Maybe make this a little bit wider and this a little bit wider at the tips. Man, let me go back to realistic again. This will give me a better idea. And maybe I'll bring my radius down to 0.2 or even 0.3. And then we have a nice little feather shape. And you can make this um, bigger if you want and you know, as complex as you want in any shape. You can just right click to remove some of those. But for us, I think this looks pretty good. Bring that kind of stem down a little bit. Next, we're gonna groom this a little bit. And to do that, we're gonna use our surface comb. I'll probably do that right above guides here. So I'll add in my surface comb. And you can see that it kind of combs our hair based on the surface direction, which is good. Um, now you can also, so you can see that they're kind of pushed along the surface here. And you can also inform that via a sync vector. So I'm gonna go into sub object sinks, and I'm gonna create a sync to kind of push these in the direction we want. So obviously we want them to kind of go back in this direction and on the sides, like so. And we go there. And on the bottom. That seems to work well. And I'm gonna try and just slope this along the back a bit so we can get those a little straighter there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just uh, right click to stop creating those. And I'm going to go into uh, Sync Tips and click and drag. And I'm going to move this because I'd rather have that be a little bit down, like so. And you can adjust those if you want to uh, pretty quickly and easily if we don't have the Sync Tips kind of matching up the way that we want. Once we're fairly happy with the direction there, we can go in. Maybe we'll turn on Show End Result. And I might go back to that consistent colors to kind of see how those are shifting on our character. And we can adjust, uh, of course, how these are laying, whether they're laying flat or uh, if they have a little more puff out. So I'm gonna bring back the original character and uh, actually I'm gonna hide uh, that base mesh there so we can see our character here. And there we go like that. We can kind of maybe make them a little poofy, more poofy there something of that nature. And this is, of course, something that you can map. So if you want them a little more poofy by the chest, uh, you can map that with um, a uh, texture if you wish. OK. Last but not least, what we're going to do is adjust the rotation of these. They're, it's a little bit wonky at this point. They are kind of following along with those sync vectors. But what we want to do is go up to uh, Hair from Guides. And above that, we're going to add an OX rotation modifier. This is a new modifier, uh, kind of helping create feathers for the 4.0 release. And you can see when we go into rotate strands, uh, this is going to allow us to rotate them, it's at 90, uh, in different angles. So you can kind of rotate those around very easily and you can use a map. Now, usually what I do is choose this orientation based on strand, which is gonna snap them right into shape uh, across the character. So again, we'll go into consistent colors. You can see that that sits them flat on the character there which is very nice. So uh, that's really what we're looking for. And now I kind of get a better idea that in surface comb, uh, maybe I do need to puff these out a little bit more. Maybe something like this. OK, man, I think we're feeling a little bit better about that. So we can go into rotate strands, and uh, we can adjust this, even if we have orientation step uh, by strand here. And you can adjust those. And again, you can probably do this via map if you want to. You can set an angle map here. So if maybe these around this area wanted to be uh, a little bit out of a different angle, you could probably set that up there. Last but not least, we're going to add our OX mesh from strands. So I can go up here to the top, and I'll choose our mesh from strands modifier. 
and you can see that then we're going to get a mesh out of this and this is actually a thick mesh a uh, prismatic uh, mesh and cylindrical we probably want to go with the flat billboards which is going to help us the most so you can see how that goes there and by default we have uh, per strand UV coordinates which in this case I probably don't want to use because I probably just want to get the color from the mesh below and this will allow us to render our character as a mesh these are all instance meshes of course um, in any renderer that we want so uh, we can have this character um, in our renderer and uh, get our mesh set up for our bird I think that's about it for our basic grooming of the character with feathers using Ornatrix. I can uh, turn on edge faces so we can see those guys there. And uh, you can go back in, you can tweak with edit guides if you want to comb these or do other things with them. Uh, that's just fine, but that's just a quick kind of parametric setup to a uh, feather setup with Ornatrix. And next what we're going to do is we're going to look at setting up uh, some dynamics with these feathers so they kind of flutter around and they move with the character. Uh, you can see that there is a little basic uh, animation here to our character. And we really want those feathers to kind of move with the character itself. So in the next video what we'll look at is adding some dynamics to this.